thank you, Tim, for a very nice introduction. Um, let's see if I can get my screen shared. And there we go. You should be able to see the intro slide, uh, Uganda, the Remarkable West. And yes, um, we did go to Uganda in 2019. So it's almost three years ago now. Um, hard to believe. Um, the, the trip was uh, organized by Kevin Gousset, um, who I think is on, yes, he's on the, on the Zoom tonight with us. Kevin Gousset uh, in Sacramento and um, uh, Krami Wanyama, who is the uh, owner and lead tour guide of Avian Safaris in, uh, uh, out of Kampala. Um, we had a, a group of eight people all together that left from the Sacramento area. And we flew from San Francisco to uh, Amsterdam and then we went on to Uganda for uh, I think 24 or 25 days of birding um, in Uganda. Um, the, uh, just a quick overview um, there, East, East Africa, uh, usually think of it as consisting of um, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, uh, the small countries of Rwanda and Burundi, and sometimes you would include Mozambique and Malawi down here. They're really the countries that are to the east side of the um, Great Rift Valley, the western branch of the Great Rift Valley. Um, so uh, Uganda up here is um, primarily a, a plateau of about 4,000 feet and uh, borders Lake Victoria. And on the west side of it is Lake Albert and Lake Edward. Um, it, 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 there's some mountains down here in the southwest corner and uh, very dry up in the Northwest uh, primarily. And then there is uh, savanna and acacia uh, forests, uh, woodlands uh, throughout, the, throughout the country. Um, the country is about the size of Oregon. And even though it's only the size of Oregon, it has about a thousand species. Uh, and that's really the, the result of being kind of in the center of the continent and the edges of several different habitats and having a variety of habitat within it. The, uh, the trip, so we took, um, we landed in uh, Entebbe, which is the airport for Kampala. And uh, we spent a couple days in that area doing some birding, recovering from our trip and doing some birding. And then we drove to the Southwest. Uh, Lake Umburo National Park uh, for a couple of days and then on down uh, to the very southwest tip of the country to Gahinga National Park, um, which is on the border with Rwanda. And then after a few days, we uh, in, down in this corner, we, we worked our way up the west side of the country uh, through these various national parks and along the um, uh, uh, the, the uh, what do I want to call it? The Al, um, Albertine, uh, uh, I've lost my words. But um, so we go, we go all the way north uh, to Murchison Falls National Park. And uh, at the end of the trip, of course, we headed back down to Kampala. Let's see. So uh, Krami's name for our trip was the Remarkable West. And it, it really is incredible. Um, the, the parks are wonderful. The, uh, the the views are wonderful. There are lots of, uh, lots of birds, a lot of uh, chances for some good photography. Um, so this was our lodge in, um, in, in Victoria guest town. Uh, stayed here, it was very comfortable. They had good, good food, a nice place uh, uh, for us to, and, and a very nice garden. Uh, they had plenty of birds right there for us to see. Uh, on the right-hand side is our, our ride, uh, the bus that we spent the three and a half weeks in. Uh, this is Paul, our, our driver, and this is uh, Krami, our uh, guide. His back is to you there. So let's get on to one of the first birds. The black-headed gonalek is just a beautiful bird, um, deep black uh, on its head and, and back. And 
kind of a red chin and um, belly. Uh, oh, by the way, all the all of the bird photos are mine. Um, the people and places uh, where Greta was in charge of taking uh, photos of them. So this this black-headed gonalek is about an eight-inch bird, um, and it was nesting right in the tree on the property, right in, right out in front of where we would eat um, breakfast. Uh, it's a, a, a wonderful view of it. Uh, it's in the group of bush shrikes and chagras. Um, they're similar to shrikes in that they prey on uh, small insects and, and even small vertebrates. Um, this is one of several species of hornbill that we, we saw during the trip. Uh, can be found pretty widely in Central Africa, the crowned hornbill. And this one was in the Entebbe Botanical Gardens. The Botanical Gardens were only uh, maybe a mile or so away from where we stayed. It was a short ride and we went there twice, I think, in the first couple of days and then again at the end of the trip. So we saw a lot of birds in that, uh, in that area. Uh, this is a very unusual bird. Uh, it's found throughout uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, it's uh, the only species within its family, so it's the regal bird, um, the hammer cop, uh, named for its uh, oddly shaped head. Uh, this has this almost mane of feathers that comes back off the back of the off the back of the head. It's probably related, uh, not very closely, to pelicans. It feeds like herons in uh, uh, picking up whatever it can from the the grass and, and shallow water. It builds these huge nests. So it's a, a this is the bird up here and it's about, uh, it's almost two feet long, the bird. So you can see this nest is, can be up to five or six feet across. It's a domed room and they have um, an entrance somewhere near the base of it. So it's quite an unusual bird. And this again was in the Entebbe uh, gardens. Um, the red-chested sunbird, this is the first of, of several sunbirds that we'll look at. Uh, it is a, a small bird. The, the sunbirds as a, as a group um, are all about five or six inches. Uh, this species is found in South Sudan and Uganda and Tanzania, uh, Africa. Uh, and in, in Africa and East through Asia, there's over 143 species of sunbirds. They're um, entirely analogous to our hummingbirds in that they uh, sip ne nectar and they eat small insects. And so you always find them in flowers, uh, colorful flowers, and they're, they have iridescent um, plumage and uh, uh, are, have this decurved bill. Birds flower pierce and will feed at the base of a, uh, of a flower. We had several uh, we had several primates and lots of other mammals that we saw during the trip. The vervet monkeys are kind of everywhere in in East Africa, and this one uh, had greeted us as we went into the gardens. Uh, is true. Uh, was also in, uh, I guess we just went right from our uh, balcony in at the Victoria View guest house. Uh, this pair of birds, uh, really a striking color with the uh, crimson crown and the yellow bill and the yellow cask on the bill. A, a fairly large bird, about uh, 20, 22 inches. Um, it's uh, distinctive with that heavy bill. It's, it's uh, primarily a fruit eater, I think. Uh, we had a number of bee eaters. So this is another class of bird that I particularly like and took lots of photos of. The white-throated bee eater um, we, we saw in the, uh, in the Entebbe area primarily. The, um, I put the, the genus and species name on this one. Merops is its genus. And we saw several birds in that genus. They all have this black line through the eye but they vary uh, otherwise in, in a wide variety of colors. Many of them have these also have these central tail streamers. I think we saw seven species uh, in this genus uh, during our, our time in Uganda. Um, one of the more striking um, raptors that we saw is this long-crested eagle. 
Uh, this bird is pretty long, so slightly larger than a red-tailed hawk. It has this real distinctive crest with the feathers that um, stand up. And in flight, it has this bright white uh, patch in the primaries. It's one of the booted eagles. And uh, you can see this in the central picture where it has feathering all the way down to its toes. Uh, it's found in uh, open forests throughout Africa, and it mainly eats small rodents. Um, I, I, I put several birds on here uh, just to give you an impression of, of how confusing it can be uh, in, in a habitat where you have so many different birds and um, many of them are uh, closely related. Our, our guide, uh, Krami, was excellent and uh, he, he knew all the birds visually. There was no question about that, but he also knew them all um, by their calls. And so it was easy for, uh, um, for us to discern which bird was which. Uh, he would often hear it in the, and then we would it. Um, so we had these, these are, I call them yellow weavers. They're all in the same genus. And I, I think there's some 60, there are over 60 uh, yellow weavers in this genus. Um, you can see there's some distinct differences in their patterns, but from a distance, yellow and black weavers can be difficult to tell. But we had all of these in the uh, botanical garden right there in Entebbe. They're a colonial bird, and the weavers as a group are noted for their intricately woven nests. And we'll see some of that later. Um, the woodland kingfisher, uh, this bird is about eight or nine inches. It, prefers kind of open woodland uh, gardens around towns, farmland. It's um, mainly preys on insects and other uh, small prey. It, um, it's different from our belted kingfisher. Our belted kingfisher is a, uh, we see it only along waterways, uh, lakes and streams. Um, this uh, kingfisher is one that, that lives out um, in, in the dry land or more likely to be out in dry land. Uh, so the second morning that we were there, we headed off to the Mabamba wetlands. Um, in the uh, distance, you see um, these are uh, a papyrus swamp or a papyrus wetland. Um, the, the people here are uh, organizing us, getting us into our boats. And uh, they are, uh, this, it's, it's part of their regular business is to do, um, um, to take birders out, uh, guiding birders out into the swamp. So they keep these channels open and they um, scout out birds are going to be. And, uh, send, and then here we are heading out down the channel. So one of the first birds that we saw, or one that was most obvious, was this African jacana. Uh, the the jacanas are, um, uh, there are various species of them worldwide. And in um, the whole, as a group, they're noted for these really long toes that, that enable them to uh, walk around and, and on floating vegetation. Um, they are, uh, related also to the, the jacanas that we have in Central and South America. The bird at the, and this is about a, about a 10 inch bird. Um, they're pretty widely distributed. Uh, the bird in the bottom center is not just a young jacana, it's a lesser jacana, a different species. And so this is a, uh, one of the specialties in that area was to uh, go find both the African jacana and the lesser jacana. And we did indeed get one before it started to rain and we had to, we had to head back. So the, the lesser jacana is only about six inches. The African jacana is 10 or 11, much larger bird. They both eat primarily insects. Um, pied kingfisher, another kingfisher is, uh, we saw it in the Mabamba wetlands. It's also different from our kingfisher in that while it is uh, primarily a fish eating uh, kingfisher, it is also colonial and, and uh, you'll find large groups of them together. Our um, belted kingfisher is often just, uh, I think for, for most of the year, we'll find them alone uh, and uh, except during breeding season when you'll have them in couples. 
So it's a little bit different, but a very striking bird. This one, the one in the middle is, uh, uh, it, it does a hovering flight sometimes and uh, watches for a, a fish before it dives down into the water. Blue-breasted bee eater, there's seven or eight inches, one on the left. Uh, it's the same genus, as I said, the, the Merops, um, as the white-throated that we looked at before. This species uh, is seen uh, all the way across central part of Africa from Nigeria in the west over to Kenya and Tanzania in the east. And the little bee eater in the, down on the right-hand side uh, is the smallest bee eater. Uh, we had a couple of those in the Entebbe area. They're only six or seven inches. Uh, it's, and it's much more widespread throughout uh, sub-Saharan Africa. The one on the right is doing a wing stretch and a, and a, a tail spread at the same time, which I thought gave a, a pretty good feel for um, how long the wing is and how colorful the bird can be. Um, this was the, uh, the shoe bill was the star of the show. It was one of the main target birds that we were headed out to find in the swamp. Uh, it is uh, this uh, heavy bird. It's, it's maybe four feet tall. It's got uh, this really odd uh, shoe shaped bill. It can be a, a, up to an eight, or eight to 12 inches long and four inches wide. Uh, it, it's an ambush predator. So it will sit quietly for a long time waiting for a fish to come by. They eat particularly lungfish and catfish are its main prey. Um, it's found mainly in the Uganda marshes and around Lake Victoria. And that's why uh, people, it's one of the main reasons people travel to Uganda to, uh, to go birding is to find this specialty. So we, we, had, a, we had a good look at this bird. Um, I think everyone's photos were exactly the same because we were, we were all sitting together in the boat and the bird didn't move for the whole 15 minutes that we were looking at it. Um, this is the papyrus gonolec, another gonolec. Um, this one was out in the papyrus and it is, it has a very restricted habitat. Uh, it's found only in papyrus marshes. Uh, again, it's a, a bush shrike or a chagra. It's about inches. Um, it's an East African endemic. So, and primarily in Uganda. So it's another bird that we uh, go there, especially to see. Here's Kevin and Denise. Uh, on the, the next day, we were headed at south to the southwest. And um, uh, Kevin and Denise, we stopped at uh, the equator and we all had our photographs taken on the equator. This was about uh, a couple hours south, uh, southwest of uh, Kampala. So we were on our way and we got to Lake Umburo National Park. Uh, Lake Umburo National Park is about 150 miles by road southwest of Kampala. Uh, on the left is the view from out from our cabin. It's uh, a, a, a grassland area, uh, kind of a mixed savanna, but with a lot of acacia. And the acacia apparently is uh, invasive in this area. Um, I have, let's see, this also on the right hand side shows one of the very comfortable uh, entrance areas that we had, um, the entrance area and the dining area to our lodge at Lake Umburo. Um, yeah, and that's our, that's part of our group uh, there at the bottom of the photo. So one of the birds that were, uh, I was really excited to see was this Barrow's Eagle Owl. Um, it's the largest African owl with a wingspan of about five feet. Um, there, uh, it's not unusual to find them out during the day. And so we did see them in a couple of different places. Um, the pink eye, the pink skin over the eye is actually bare skin. Um, a, a large owl and uh, they were just kind of watching us as we went by, we were watching it. Um, the, the African gray hornbill. So again, this is one of several hornbills we saw there. They have this uh, large bill, they have a, 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 a smaller, larger cask, that, depending on the species, um, above the bill. 
And this is a male. Uh, the female is slightly colored differently. I have a photograph. I'm never eat anything that, that they can find. Um, open savanna and woodland. And here it is in, a, in an acacia tree. Um, the the Afshi eagle. Uh, as you might guess, uh, this, this bird is in the same genus as our bald eagle. It's a little bit smaller than the bald eagle and it's seen throughout Africa. Uh, it is mainly a fish eater. Um, and I think it will steal fish from other birds as well, similar to what our bald eagle does. Um, Yellow-billed oxpecker in the upper left. Uh, the oxpeckers are, are interesting. Um, and, and it's on, in this case, it's on um, African buffalo. So the oxpeckers clean the host animal of insect parasites. The um, taxonomists have put them between dippers and starlings, which I guess is appropriate. It looks, uh, a, it looks a lot like a starling to me in, in, in terms of its overall shape. The bill's not quite as sharp. Um, the oxpecker, the individual oxpeckers will stay with the host animal uh, th that they're on and, and uh, virtually live on it, on that single animal. Uh, for its whole life. Uh, they spend all of their time with the animal, except during the nesting season, when I, I think they are a cavity nester. The finfoot was one of our target birds. Um, the African finfoot is pretty widespread. It's not a, it's not a bird that's, uh, it's not endangered. It's uh, apparently there's a lot of them out there but they're hard to find. And um, our, our guides and the rangers that we were on the boat with knew where to look for this bird. So we were able to find it. Um, they're along lakes and streams. They're very secretive. They hide under the vegetation along the banks. And so they can be uh, hard to see, but we had, we had good luck and had a couple of good photographs of this bird. Um, they're distantly related to the sun reed of uh, South America and, and look somewhat like it. You can, uh, if you've seen that, you would recognize it, the fin foot. So um, Malachite Kingfisher, this bird is really striking colors. Um, just a brilliant orange and a, a bright blue. Uh, in, in good sunlight, it, uh, it is just an outstanding, uh, outstanding little bird for photography. It's not very big. It's only about five inches, five or six inches. Uh, and it's, mount, it's found mainly around freshwater. It eats fish, fish frogs, and crabs. Malachite kingfisher. This is an interesting uh, raptor, uh, the Bataloure. Uh, it's a... It's, a, it's about a two foot large, a two foot long bird with a wingspan of about six feet. It has this really short tail, which gives it a, a, a very distinctive um, profile as you look at it from below. Uh, and, and also the coloring, the black and white uh, wing makes it a pretty obvious bird, fairly easy to identify. Uh, I say it's, it's unusual because the systematics have it placed between vultures and eagles in its own genus. It, it eats carrion like the vultures, but it also captures its prey like, uh, like eagles. So it's a, a, a bit more uh, generalist than, than either eagles or vultures. Uh, Red-faced barbet was also one of our target birds and we found uh, this one in Mburo National Park. Um, it's endemic to East Africa in a fairly restricted range. It has a heavy bill, so it's primarily a fruit eater. It has this interesting structure on the bill, but, which is a, a so-called tooth. Um, so it's one of the toothed barbets. Uh, they're related to the New World barbets. They're in the same family, but a different genus. Seven or eight inches big. Uh, lilac breasted roller is just a wonderful bird. Uh, I love taking photos of these. Uh, really a striking uh, combination of colors. It's a, a little bit bigger, about 12 inches with its uh, fairly long tail. 
It's found out in grasslands and in the acacia woodlands. Uh, has fairly long tail streamers when, when it's mature. Uh, preys on a variety of uh, small uh, insects, beetles, butterflies, even uh, small birds, apparently. Another sunbird, um, just very quickly, this guy is again about four inches. The orange chested subspecies of the variable sunbird is found throughout Uganda and Rwanda. So as a subspecies, it was something we had to find in, in that area. It's a little more widespread, this, the species across Africa. Gray-crowned crane um, is a, a, a much larger bird. It's about four feet tall, has a wingspan of about six feet. Uh, it's very similar in size to our sandhill crane. Uh, in, but this is found mainly in East Africa and southward. And I think it's non-migratory, so uh, you have to find them in, um, in East Africa. Really an unusual face, kind of a harlequin look to it. So uh, a couple of days, we headed southwest again to um, Gahinga Gorilla National Park is what it's called. Um, in, uh, on the upper left is the Gahinga Volcano itself. Uh, the volcano itself is along the uh, border between Rwanda and, um, and Uganda. So we're not far from the border, only about a mile, mile and a half, something like that, two or three kilometers. And you can see on the right that the people in that area uh, they're making use of every bit of land they can to uh, uh, farm. As everything is divided up into small farm, uh, small agricultural uh, areas. And so they're terraced all the way up this um, ancient uh, volcanic peak. So there are all volcanoes there are all um, extinct, and, uh, but they form uh, the mountains, the uh, Virunga Mountains. Um, there are mountain gorillas in this park, um, but we were not there for the gorillas, at, at, uh, not, not for this park. Um, the Gahinga Peak is about 11,000 feet, and where we were walking that day was up at about 8,000 feet. So we were now up into the highlands, uh, the montane forest. Um, we, so we had the Western Tinker birds, one of the first little birds we saw. Uh, this is, a, again, a small bird, only about four inches. Uh, it's found primarily above 6,000 feet. And this subspecies is only found in Gahinga and uh, Windy National Parks in East Africa in, uh, in Uganda. And go on. So the Rinzori Turaco, this is the first of, I've got a, the double asterisk on that. Uh, this is the first of the Albertine Rift endemics that we saw. Um, the, the first one that I'm showing you anyway. It's a pretty big bird. It's about 18 inches and really colorful. Um, it was hard to find. We, uh, I think our, our guides were they were walked us around and we kept looking. We heard it in the distance and we had to look and look in the trees. And it took, it took a little while to find it. It was sitting up very quietly, um, fairly far up. Uh, and and uh, we were able to get a, a, a terribly backlit photos of it, but uh, they are distantly related to cuckoos. This is another Turaco. It's related to that first one that, that I showed you from um, Entebbe. Um, Again, the, these birds are um, montane birds, and the, the, the map here at the left shows the, the various highland areas in, around the Albertine Rift where these uh, specialty birds are seen. And we are down here right in the corner uh, next to Rwanda. Uh, another uh, Albertine Rift endemic is the Renzori double-collared sunbird, which is also known as Stuhlman's sunbird, or, um, and it's uh, a colorful bird. I think this may have been the only one of those that we saw, I'm not sure. Found mainly above 7,000 feet, so very restricted range. Regal sunbird, 
a little bit less restricted. It's uh, from 5,000 to 10,000 feet. Uh, also a Albertine Rift endemic. And uh, this one is, uh, I think, an even uh, more beautiful bird. And uh, we were able to get a couple of good photographs. I'm not sure it's the same bird. It may have been two different birds that were photographed here. So we're still in Gahinga National Park and at about 8,000 feet. And we were walking through a bamboo forest. So in, uh, after we passed through this bamboo forest, we took a lunch break and um, we found this little guy. One of the uh, rangers um, pointed it out to us, the coarse chameleon. Uh, so we had a variety of, of uh, not only uh, birds, but a, a whole variety of vertebrates. I don't think he changed colors while we were watching, but he did walk around a lot, very slowly. Back to the birds. This is the Rinzori batis. Um, again, a, a teen rift uh, that we can only in that area, mainly in the um, forest of Gahinga and Buindi National Parks. It's very active little insectivore. It reminded me of our kinglets and our chickadees. I had a recording. I actually uh, took that recording off of the Macaulay Library. I forgot the citation up. I hope you all can hear that. Very cute little call. Another uh, endemic is the strange weaver. So we had weavers all over Uganda, but this one is one that we would only see uh, in, in the Albertine Rift, um, the strange weaver. I looked and looked, I couldn't find why it's called strange weaver. I don't know if it's named for a person or if it's uh, something unusual about it, but it uh, is also an endemic to this area. Cinnamon chested bee eater. Uh, this was uh, one of our, uh, the Chuya Forest, uh, uh, one of our driving days, uh, where a, a place we stopped along the road. Um, this is just another striking bee eater. It's found in the highlands above 4,000 feet. So now we're headed off to um, Bwindi National Park. The, the national park, the, the official name of it is Bwindi Impenetrable National Park. And uh, one of our friends who went with us, um, Catherine, she, she told me that as soon as she heard that Kevin was taking us to, uh, to Bwindi Impenetrable National Park, she had to go because of the name. Uh, we're uh, entering there at the south side and we were gonna drive through the park to get to our lodging on the north side. Uh, the view back in the opposite direction was this. Uh, so we're down in, in Southwest um, Uganda. You can see on the countryside, uh, lots of agriculture, small plots um, in that area and further north, there was both tea and coffee were prominent, uh, uh, were, were prominent in, in the farms. The distant hilltop up here, you see a, a, a dense forest. Well, that's just the edge of the Bwindi National Park. And uh, so it's gonna look like that. So the edge of the park is very distinct. Lots of people living right outside it. So this is the view uh, into Bwindi from our lodge uh, at the small village of Ruhija. The view into the park uh, at sunset, the, I think the first night we were there from the dining hall. It was a gorgeous view, and we had a lot of rain or downpour, but it was very pretty. Uh, the next day was for gorilla trekking, um, and indeed, we got to go after a fairly short drive. Um, we got to walk into the forest. We had um, one porter for each of us, and there were two or three rangers in our group. So we had six, almost 20 people, I think. We walked downhill for what seems like about an hour and a half, I'm not sure. And um, they're, they're, the way they do this is there are scouts that follow the gorillas 
um, during the day and keep track of where they're going and where they uh, bed down overnight. And then the next morning, we go out and refine them. And the, the scouts will radio back to the rangers the location. And so the rangers then bring the visitors in to see the gorillas. Uh, you can only spend an hour at a time with them. And they're very strict about that. I think my first photograph and my last photographs were like 58 minutes apart. Um, the climb back out was extremely hot and difficult. We, we came downhill very easily, but going back uphill was difficult. The porters helped push and pull us back up to the road. They were uh, essential and, and very helpful, very kind. The, uh, a couple more photos of the gorillas. There's on the, uh, I, I should go back and now the sky here on the right is the uh, dominant silverback. And I think the one on the left, I, I don't know, is either the, the female, the dominant female or one of the older uh, youngsters. Um, here in this photo, the, the uh, gorilla on the left had climbed up the tree to, to snag a little branch. Uh, this was one of the younger gorillas. And on the right-hand side, the photo is the, the youngest of the group. I think there were seven in this group, um, seven gorillas. We got very close to them. Uh, they're, what they were doing, they were eating, I think primarily they were stripping the bark off of these vines. That seemed to be what they were after. And we were, we spent an hour the whole time. We were 15 to 20 feet from them. Uh, they watched us, we watched them. And I think if this will play, there's a little video here. Give you an idea of how close we were. cameras and whispering in the background. I'll play it one more time. So we, we really are um, really right next to them. And at one point, one of them walked uh, right between us. So back to the birds. The next morning, we went uh, another long walk into the forest. Um, a lot of downhill, it had rained the night before, it was muddy. Uh, I think we had several slight injuries uh, and, uh, and there a lot of mud. But uh, we got to this uh, Grower's Broadbill, which was uh, one of the rarities. It's a, it's a small bird, six inches. Uh, it's not very well known and there's only a few um, sightings of it in Uganda. But as you can see here on the right, it's feeding young. So um, I think we have, uh, Proof of uh, a breeding uh, area. Broadbills are an unusual group. There's, uh, I think there's only eight other species and I think they're all in Southeast Asia. So it's a little unusual that this one uh, is found in Central Africa. Grower's broadbill. Uh, Green-throated sunbird, um, just another very pretty little sunbird. From the back, it's a very brown bird, not striking, almost black, uh, but from the front, it has this lovely iridescence, uh, green, blue, and kind of a purple, always on flowers, feeding on nectar. Uh, there are, I think, three trogons in Africa, and this was, uh, this was one that we saw, three trogon species. This is the male bar-tailed trogon. It's uh, slightly larger, about 11 or 12 inches. It's found in the montane forests uh, of Nigeria and, and then on into East Africa. Um, this one was seen later. No, this was in Bwindi. Uh, that note is for something else. This was in Bwindi. And I think, I think I still have this recording. They are related to the trogons that we have in the new world. But uh, as I said, there's only three of them in every species of Africa. Whoops, one more time. When we're out in the forest, there's... Oh, 
they're out in the forest. There are wonderful sounds all the time. Um, uh, mantled gareza, uh, also called the uh, black and white colobus. But overall, we saw 12 species of primate in, in various places. Uh, this this uh, animal is really striking with these this long white fur on the back and an extremely long tail that hangs down. They're pretty good size. And we also saw another chameleon, uh, the Renzori three-horned chameleon. I think um, this was near Bwindi. We were on the, we were driving along the road and uh, Krami this uh, off to the right in, in a coffee plantation. Um, he has really good eyes and I guess he knew what he was looking for. So we stopped and got out and took a few photographs. This is the same uh, animal, uh, maybe five minutes apart, uh, taken from one side into the other. So he did change his, quite a bit of his color while we was watching it. Um, okay, so we headed off to, uh, now we're up to Queen Elizabeth National Park. And uh, this area is more of an open savanna. Uh, you can see in the distance of uh, very scattered trees. And, and uh, so it's more like what people often think of uh, East Africa savanna, uh, and it does have a, a wide range of um, uh, big game animals and uh, the um, uh, the large cats. Uh, it has leopards and lions. Um, and when you're in the national parks, you have to remember you can't get out of your vehicle, and that's. Uh, it's meant to keep you away from the animals, protect the animals, but also protect the people. Um, let's see, the cob is one of the many antelope species that we saw. Um, cob is pretty, is very similar to him. And in Queen Elizabeth National Park, uh, I don't think there are any impala, so cob is the favorite prey item for lions in this park. On the lower right are two males that were competing for dominance at a, a, a lek. Um, so they, they meet at a particular place and, and uh, duke it out to see who's, who's the dominant male. Back to the birds, collared Pratt and Cole. Um, this is a, a bird out in the uh, open uh, savanna area. I don't know very much about them. Uh, I know they uh, they are an, an aerial insectivore, and they'll they'll eat large insects, uh, uh, beetles and grasshoppers, uh, any kind of a flying insect uh, primarily. They have long wings, um, very unusual pattern around the face. So the collared Pratt and Cole. Um, another raptor, the brown snake eagle. This bird is, is unusual. Um, I mean, it's got uh, this bright yellow eye is so striking and it's a fairly large bird. It, it doesn't look large because I think it has a short neck and a, a funny large head on a short neck or maybe it's just the way this one on the right is standing. But it's larger than our ferruginous hawk. And um, it's, uh, we saw this species in several places. Quite a striking raptor. Uh, the black-headed weaver. Um, I wanted to show you this because this illustrates nicely uh, the, the weaver nests, how they co uh, nest colonially in um, acacia trees and they will nest very close to one another. They build these um, densely woven uh, balls, uh, sort of spherical nests, and they have openings that are um, just at the bottom uh, of the nest, you can see one there and another one there that they go in and out of. And, and here are a, a couple of birds that are um, weaving the nests. So this is the typical um, weaver nest. Uh, striped swallows, I don't wanna say too much about them. We saw several swallow species and this is one of the more colorful, um, striking looking. Small button quail. This is a very interesting little bird. They, they are small, only about six inches, and really well camouflaged. 
there were a couple of them on the side of the road right next to the van. And we had a lot of trouble getting everybody to see them because just as they're sitting there, they really blend in. Um, they're really hard to see. But pretty small and very cryptically um, colored, except for that funny staring eye. Um, let's see, in the afternoon, we took a boat trip on the Kazinga Channel, which connects between Lake George and Lake Edward. Uh, just move right along. The, uh, the, on, on the boat trip, we saw a lot of water birds. Um, this is the black winged stilt. Uh, it's pretty widespread from Africa, even over into Indonesia. It's the same genus as our black necked stilt, as you might be able to tell. And, very looks very similar, although I think maybe longer legged, uh, even longer legged. We had uh, African spoon, which is again in the same genus as our rosy eight spoon bill that we see in Central and South America. And in the photo on the right, of course, there are elephant in the background and African buffalo. And it was just uh, the spoon bill is just walk among the legs, um, they're all feeding together. We saw elephants and hippos, uh, crocodiles, Nile monitors, all kinds of large, uh, uh, large vertebrates. The African skimmer, uh, another really a, a, a wonderful bird. I, I love skimmers. Uh, I don't see them up here. I've never seen one yet in um, Mendocino County, but uh, I've seen them down, of course, off of Southern California. The African skimmer is a little bit different. The, the main difference that you can see notice uh, is the, the um, black skimmer that we have here has a black distal bill. This bill uh, on the African skimmer is entirely orange. There was a big flock of them that got up and flew around. Um, skimmers, of course, fly along with the lower mandible in the water. And when they touch something, they snap closed and, and grab it. It's found throughout rivers and lakes in Africa. We get into some bigger birds, the yellow-billed stork. Um, it's nearly 40 inches tall and has about a five foot wingspan. Uh, it's found all throughout Africa along rivers, lakes, and wetlands. There in the background is another uh, skimmer, African uh, skimmer. And I think this is the, anyway, that's the hind foot of a, a, an Egyptian goose. There's other, a lot of other birds along. I can't show you the photographs of everything. Um, this was probably the mo one of the most striking birds we saw. This is a very large bird. Um, it stands over five feet tall and it's got a, like an eight foot wingspan. Um, and it's such strange coloring on the bill and, and the face. Um, and then even the, these joints have this, this strange pink color, that, which matches its feet. So this is the saddle-billed stork. Um, and, and then the foreground over here, even more birds, the yellow-billed stork. There's a pink-backed pelican. And we had uh, uh, cormorants. Uh, I, th I think these are uh, great cormorant. And even there's a sacred ibis here someplace, but I don't have any other details of those birds. A uh, long-tailed cormorant, um, very similar to uh, our pelagic cormorant in its uh, size and shape, a little different coloring, of course. And the African darter. Um, the darter uh, is most closely related to our anhinga uh, in, in Florida. So these are, are closely related. These two birds are in closely related but different families. Um, let's see. We went uh, from, um, from Queen Elizabeth National Park. We went north uh, a couple more places, uh, several more places along the way. Uh, we did see chimpanzee. We'd also went chimpanzee trekking and we saw them in two different uh, locations. We saw uh, a group of them at Royal Mile, which is near Masindi, and we saw a group, uh, saw a couple of them at the Chibali Forest near Fort Portal. And I'll see if this will play. 
these guys were all fairly old. Uh, we were told they were probably in their 40s, um, not young chimps at all. They can live in the wild. I, I remember they lived to 40s and 50s, but not much more than that. Um, let's see, we'll move on. Yellow-throated tinkerbird. So this was at the Bigodi wetland near the Chibali forest, a very pretty little bird, another tinker bird. Um, they have a, a pretty distinct sound. It, they pull up the um, yellow rumps tinker bird. As a matter of fact, they look almost identical, uh, but they make a very different call. Uh, this was another reason to have a good guide along because uh, he would knew, he knew all these calls. The first is the yellow throated tinker bird on the left, and the second one is yellow rumped. A little different uh, tone and a slightly slower, but otherwise they are pretty similar looking. Uh, Pintailed Wida, very briefly, it's a small seed eater, um, except for its very long tail. The bird's only about four and a half or five inches, but with, uh, with the uh, long tail feathers, it's about 13 inches. And there's one in flight. Um, this is a, the, a male in breeding plumage. They, uh, they have these long, it's thought that they have these long tail feathers as a sort of a sexual selection. Um, the males will display males and actually display to one another, um, trying to be dominant in their territory. The pin-tailed white eye. Um, this was a, a very pretty bird. Uh, the African blue fly catcher. Uh, it, it, we had it in, at the chimpanzee guest house near the Chibali forest, but it, um, it's a funny name. The, the, the family, I put, it, I put that up there just to remind, it's the Stenosterity, but the family is called the fairy flycatchers, which I thought is just a wonderful name for them all. They have these long um, central tail feathers that are kind of graduated to the side. Uh, there's, a, I think, a group of about 20 of them across uh, uh, Africa and Asia. African blue flycatcher. One of the reasons I, I liked it so much, too, is that it, its color is very similar to our mountain bluebird, a, a very almost a, a electric blue above going to a lighter blue below. Very pretty bird. Uh, let's see. The, Motor taxis. Um, the street. This is a street scene near Masindi. Uh, they uh, it, just to point out that they are um, they're everywhere. There's motorcycles everywhere in East Africa. It's the most common form of transportation. There are very few uh, private cars, and they will take a motorcycle and put an extended seat on it. And sometimes you'll see three and four or five people on a single motorcycle. Uh, This is the place where we stayed in uh, Masindi, the Masindi Hotel. It's very comfortable. It dates from 1923 in the colonial era. Uh, Royal Mile near Masindi. It's part of the Bodongo Central Forest Reserve. Uh, the Bodongo Forest is known for its chimpanzee research. Uh, we were there primarily for birding, but we did see a small group of chimps. And this is a researcher that was uh, I think she was from um, Netherlands. She was busy and we couldn't talk to her about her work, but uh, we did see the chimps. Uh, an arena trogon, one of the other one of the other three trogons. We get to see this one along the Royal Mile. Uh, Chocolate-backed kingfisher. This was a special bird to see. It was the only one that we saw of this species in um, during our trip. Uh, they nest in arboreal termite structures. So they will hollow out a, 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 um, a nest in, in a termite structure that's up in a tree. So they, uh, it's, it's a very, un, at least it's unusual to me. Uh, I, guess, I guess other of these kingfishers do that as well. 
Uh, it wasn't all birds and mammals. There were also a number of um, butterflies, birding guts. I took pictures of butterflies. Um, I like this because of the background sounds, but you can also see there were hundreds, literally, of butterflies feeding on the ground here. Um, we were, it was explained to us that they were feeding on the salts uh, of a place where uh, probably a large animal had urinated, and so the salts were valuable to them. So we're headed now to Murchison Falls National Park, our last stop, and um, but this is up in the northwest uh, along Lake Albert, and it, uh, the Victoria Nile flows through the uh, park. We stayed at the Paraa Safari Lodge, which overlooks the Nile. It was really very comfortable, um, really set up for uh, first class accommodation. Uh, on, the, the, on the way in, before we got to the lodge, we drove to the Merchant. Murchison Falls, which is on the Nile. It's a place where the uh, river falls through a very narrow cut, um, maybe I don't it's 10 or 15 feet wide. And so it makes a very large sound. It's a very striking location. And it's about um, 10 miles upstream from where we stayed. So while we're in the park, uh, we're out in the savanna again. Uh, of, of Murchison Falls National Park. This is the Marshall Eagle. The Marshall Eagle is huge. It's a, a big eagle with a seven foot wingspan. It's one of the two largest eagles in Africa, the other being the crowned eagle. Uh, this eagle, the Marshall Eagle, prefers kind of open forest and savanna. It'll take small mammals, uh, in, including young antelope and monkeys, uh, monitor lizards and other vertebrates. The crowned eagle and the martial eagles are analogous to the harpy eagle that we have in Central and South America. So kind of a, a top predator. Marsh chagra, eight or nine inch bird, very pretty, large insects. It eats grasshoppers, dragonflies. A giant kingfisher. This kingfisher is quite a bit larger. Um, they, they were out over the river uh, in, in tree branches that were out over the river, just watching, uh, feeding. Uh, there's the, a male and a female here, and our guide taught us how to tell the difference. You can see the, the uh, rufus is high on the chest on this one and, and low on this one. And he told us that the female wears the skirt and the male wears the vest. So we'll have to remember that when you see a giant kingfisher. It's quite a bit larger than ours, a couple, three inches larger, I think. And Goliath is also a very large bird, much larger than our great blue heron. Um, and it's, uh, it's up to a seven foot wingspan. The great blue heron has about a six foot wingspan. So that's enough to make it quite a bit larger. A uh, very chestnut under, uh, carriage, a uh, huge bill, and uh, very elegant birds uh, standing along the edge of the river as we drove by, as we rode by. Uh, I had to take pictures of palm swifts. Those of you who know, like, I like taking pictures of birds in flight. Uh, uh, the palm swifts do nest primarily in palms. And they're widely distributed in Africa. These guys were flying in and out of the palm tree at our hotel. It was right above the swimming pool. Uh, they have a fairly small body with a long a forked tail and very long, elegant wings that are swept back. Uh, a pretty striking bird. There, we saw four other swift species also while we were in, in Africa. The African palm swift, very pretty bird. Um, lapwings, we had a whole variety of lapwings. These birds are most closely related to our plovers. Um, there's also a in, in South America, I think we have uh, one or two other lapwings that are related to these. Um, these are all birds of kind of the dry land out in the savanna, uh, primarily. They eat invertebrates. 
they're a lot of fun to take photographs of because they are out in the open and they're colorful. They are not hiding and um, they're fairly large. So fairly easy to, to see and photograph. This is an unusual uh, species, the Abyssinian ground hornbill. It's three and a half or four feet long, um, found in Ethiopia, South and in uh, it, it captures prey items as it's walking along. It just kind of grabs whatever it can. It has, although it looks like an entirely black bird, this is the male and the female, both of them can inflate these um, cheek uh, throat pouches. Although it looks like an entirely black bird, it has white primaries. I didn't get a photograph of that, but when it spreads its wing, the, uh, the, the main flight feathers are uh, brilliant white. Unusual, very unusual bird. A ground hornbill. It is related to the other hornbills, but much, much bigger. Um, Gray-headed kingfisher, another very pretty little kingfisher. Dry land, out on acacia trees. I'm going to move on. Uh, Patus monkey. This is a primarily a ground-dwelling monkey. Uh, Arab scrubland uh, right across uh, Sub uh, right across the, the part of Africa that's just below the Sahara, Sahara all the way from east to west. Um, I, I like this photograph. It looks to me like he's like a beat poet with, with dark sunglasses. Um, I think he's eating a mushroom here. And in, at the same time, in the same area, we saw jackals. Uh, jackals are pretty common. Uh, after a lion makes a kill and is finished with it, uh, in come the jackals and the vultures to, to clean up. And speaking of lions, we, we did see lions in, in Murchison National Park, uh, Murchison Falls National Park. The lions in this area climb trees. Uh, apparently that's fairly uncommon in other parts of Africa. Uh, in this area, they will climb trees. And here they are in the middle of the afternoon. I think there are five lions in this tree. We were two or 300 yards away. And so they, they pretty much ignored us. But there was a, quite a scrum of uh, vehicles trying to get a view of the lion once all the drivers had radioed each other to, to tell where the lions were hiding. We also saw giraffes. And just a couple more. We have uh, um, a couple more bee eaters, the northern carmine bee eater, which I thought is just an incredible color. Uh, very strange color with a long uh, central tail feather and the swallowtail bee eater uh, also in the same genus, the Merops genus. And what do we have? Oh, one more bee eater, the red-throated bee eater, one of my favorite birds. They, um, there was a couple of them that were bathing in the river near our boat. So they were crashing into the water and they would come up and I, I kept trying to get a good photograph of them coming up out of the water. Um, they nest colonially in uh, either a sandy soil or uh, uh, clay soil and they, they excavate the, these burrows. And so this was a, um, a, a communal nest site uh, right out over the water along the river. And let's see, um, we're on to uh, Murchison Falls. So, so the boat trip, we took two boat trips. One went downstream to Lake Albert and the other one went upstream uh, this way to Murchison Falls. So we get right up to the base of Murchison Falls. And you can see, we were previously, uh, a couple of days before we were up at the top of the falls, able to look down on it. Um, when you're up here, there are several bird species, and among that, were rock pratpole, another of the aerial uh, insectivores. They spend most of their time on open rocks, exposed rock out in the streams and rivers. Uh, and here it's seen with a uh, pied kingfisher. If you get down to the Murchison Falls National Park, you'll definitely see rock pratpole. So um, just about done. I think uh, these were some of my favorites. I'm sure you realized I like the bee eaters. I like the sunbirds. 
The fishers are always uh, wonderful to take photographs of. Um, we saw tonight, I showed you about 80 species, and we saw nearly 600 species in this trip. Uh, I think Kevin and, and Krami were right close to 600. I think I only had around 550, something like that. Um, so what I showed you tonight was a pretty shortened version of our trip. Um, the the uh, pygmy kingfisher there on the right, it was a really small little bird. It's only about uh, four and a half inches. So uh, I think they're only a, a, a touch larger than the regal sunbird. They're a lot of fun. So um, what do I have? So the Remarkable West, thank you um, again to uh, Kevin for organizing it. And thank you to Krami Wanyama of Avian Safaris. Uh, he, are, he was our excellent guide and I highly recommend him. Um, an excellent birder and, and really easy to get along with. Uh, now I think with that, I will say thank you. And uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Tim, take it away. <laughs> wow, thanks, Roger. It's really a shame that we had to do this by Zoom and you couldn't hear all the ooing and aahing and <laughs> wow and oh my God and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all yeah. the exclamations of uh, awe time and delight. Time. Yeah. It's, uh, those are some stunning birds and, and just absolutely stunning photos. Well, thank you. If you ever get a not. chance, it's a great place to go. Yeah, you answered one of my questions, which was how many species you saw on the trip. How, do you know how many can be seen in the country? Well, if you go on uh, if you go on eBird, there's uh, 980 or something, and various other sources say you can have over a thousand species. So uh, that's that would include you know all of Uganda, going from Lake Victoria up into the high mountains in the southwest, and even the um, the rice scrubland in the northeast. So it would be hard to get uh, more than we did. In, in, so in a month or in, in three and a half weeks, we did 600. Um, and I think Krami has these trips pretty well plotted out to maximize the number of species. <laughs> That's so remarkable. I don't know if we could get more. Yeah. And uh, yeah. about how big an area are we talking about? Well, the whole country is about the size of Oregon. Yeah, OK. Uh, so a couple hundred <laughs> miles by a couple hundred miles. And uh, I mean, we, we only scratched the surface of it, too. 600 species would be a pretty good big year in North America. <laughs> oh, yeah. That would be a very good big year in North America, yeah. Yeah, that's incredible. The diversity in the tropical areas is just mind boggling. Yep, yeah. Yeah, very much. Well, I don't see a lot of questions in the chat. I think everybody was just ogling the photos. Well, that's okay. <laughs> which okay. were in incredible. Well, it was a lot of fun. It was good to good to share them with you. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, that was that was an amazing slideshow. To, it must have been an incredible trip to be part of. It, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. We we had a little bit of illness. There were a couple of people who, uh, you know, we everybody had a little problem once in a while. Uh, I think I, I slipped and fell and scraped my leg in one place. And uh, I know Catherine turned her ankle and Sonia had some something bad food poisoning for a few days. Um, it was, uh, you know, we, we had, but it was three weeks. And so you expect that sort of thing um, anywhere you go. The yeah, people exactly. Were, people were very uh, nice. It was, it was always fun to, to talk. Uh, everybody speaks English. Uh, it's, uh, the English was a little, can be a little hard to understand because they, uh, are, they speak with a British accent. Uh, it was, of course, a British uh, colony all the years. Um, I think it was it was colonized in probably 1885 to 1890, and then it was achieved its independence in around 1970. So it was really only run by the Brits for 80 or 90 years. Um, an interesting history. 
uh, a difficult history, obviously, but um, uh, they are coming out of it, I think. Yeah. What what time of year? I've forgotten. What time of year were you there? July, mid July. Uh, mid to late July. Yeah. Um, some of the birds there, you know, they'll nest year round. Uh, they can be um, various times of the year. Others, uh, of course, during July. Um, this is another another reason we didn't see so many species. Is during July the uh, migrants that go to Europe and Asia are gone. They're up in the northern hemisphere, yes. not down at the equator. Um, and I, I don't know exactly how, you know, I, I don't know very many of those birds, so I can't uh, explain in, in large detail. But um, so there'll be more of them at different times of the year. We saw birds like green, um, what's it called? Green, green shank, uh, some sandpiper birds oh, that are migrants that a few that uh, are still present while we were there. Um, other birds like um, barn swallows can travel back and forth from Africa to Europe. So there are a lot of migrants. Did you, you didn't see any swallows carrying coconuts though, I presume? Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and the weather wasn't too bad in July? It was very pleasant. Uh, I think uh, temperature wise, you know, it, it may have been 80, 85 degrees most of the time. Um, of course, you're right on the equator. So it's 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of night. Um, we had rain a few days. We had a couple of real downpours. Uh, we had one day where it rained so much that the next, or one night that it rained so much, the next day we went for a walk and the uh, the trail was just a real muddy mess. It was it was difficult. Um, I think we spent more most of our time watching our feet, and so I didn't see uh, I didn't lake, see a lot of awful. birds. I, I missed some <laughs> of them. But, um, so we were a bit, but not it wasn't an, it wasn't terrible. We did have a lot of clouds, and so I noticed that the the, the sky was gray a lot, and it, it made for uh, some difficult photography. Mm -hmm. Well, you coped with it amazingly well. There's some stunning photos. Well, thank you. The next time you go, you got to put me in your pocket. Okay. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll take you along. We'll take you along. Anytime. Anyone else have any questions? I mostly just see a bunch of fantastic job comments. Uh, people really enjoyed it. Mary Ellen Campbell was chiming in because she actually was in Uganda as well. And Sounds like had similar experiences. So, well, yeah, Thanks. it's it's a great place. I know at least one more person that was on the Zoom tonight is going to uh, go to Uganda um, in the next few months. So, uh, I, I hope it was useful for that. Yeah, yeah, that would be pretty exciting. All right. Well, if nobody else has any questions, I guess we can let Roger go, or you can just keep keep talking as long as you want, Roger. <laughs> if you have any more pictures, you can bring those up too. I imagine you. How many photos did you uh, end up oh, coming home with? I came home with about. Um, well, I don't know how many I came home with, but I I I've whittled it down to somewhere around eighteen hundred or two thousand that I've kept, and. Um, <laughs> I have photographs of, I think, 350 birds species. Wow. From, from the, out of the, the I, so I, I, they're not all great photos, but um, <laughs> <Amazing>. identifiable. <laughs> That's cool. Where's next? Next? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know, Kevin. Where are you going to take me? Um, <laughs> uh, there are a lot of places to go. Greta and I have talked about uh, going back to Australia. Uh, we would love to do that sometime. And uh, of course, going to Australia is like, you know, when, when our friends from Europe come to America, they say, oh, why don't we drive to uh, Yellowstone for the weekend? And yeah. 
<laughs> they realize that's just not possible to see everything. Um, Australia is that big, but yeah, um, we have some friends down there, so we might be able to swing a trip. Uh, other friends have gone to Mio and had a great time. It sounded like I've not been to Ecuador. I've, I've been to Brazil and um, Colombia, but Ecuador, Peru, Chile would be great. <laughs> I, mean, I can dream, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Roger. Greatly appreciated. And uh, it, like I said, it's just a shame we couldn't do it live and in person so you could get all the instant feedback from the audience because I know there would have been a, a lot of exclamations and we and on going on. So yeah. it, it would be a lot more fun. And we'll do that sometime. We'll get yeah. back. We'll all get together again one of these days. Yeah, thank you. And thank everybody for um, for sticking through. Yeah, thanks a lot, Roger. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Did you see